In this training topic, we will look at creating an out-of-the-box SSRS replacement report. And as we can see here, there are 14 out-of-the-box templates which can be used as a replacement for some of the most commonly used SSRS reports in Dynamics. Notice the LazyNet queries have been given names which are based on the SSRS report, then replacement has been added as a suffix to the name. This has been done to make it easier to identify which LazyNet reports are related to which SSRS reports. And this training topic will outline the setup needed to generate an out-of-the-box LazyNet report. More specifically, we will look at SSRS report setup and LazyNet query replacement setup. This training topic will then give a demonstration of an out-of-the-box LazyNet report being generated. The sales invoice report will be used as an example to demonstrate the two following examples. Hosting a sales invoice and generating the sales invoice report at the same time and generating a sales invoice report from an invoice journal. So firstly, we will look at the SSRS report setup. So the sales invoice SSRS report has been set up for LazyNet as shown in the following demonstration. So within Dynamics, we will go to our list of LazyNet reports to check our sales invoice SSRS report. So we will click the icon to display the list of modules. Make sure the LazyNet module is selected, then click Reports to see the list of LazyNet reports. And a filter has been applied to the list of reports so we can see the SSRS report and its replacement. So we can see the Sales Invoice SSRS report and the Sales Invoice replacement, which is the LazyNet version of the Sales Invoice SSRS report. And as this is an out-of-the-box LazyNet report, you will notice that the Sales Invoice SSRS report has already been created in this list and it has been set to active. You will also notice that the report name says Re Sales Invoice Replaced with Sales Invoice Replacement, which confirms that the Sales Invoice SSRS report has been replaced with a LazyNet query. And now we have confirmation that the SSRS report has been set up for LazyNet, we can move on to the next step. So now we will move on to the Sales Invoice Replacement LazyNet query. And here we can see that the Sales Invoice Replacement has been set to active, so the LazyNet version is now ready to be used. You will be spending most of your time in the Query Wizard when you are working on LazyNet reports in Dynamics. And one of the main purposes of the Query Wizard is to add tables and fields in order to enhance the data on a LazyNet report. Therefore, we will go to the Query Wizard to have a look at the current setup. So we have selected the sales invoice replacement and then we will click query wizard and we will click next. And we will be building the LazyNet query using the wizard. Therefore, we can use the default build query with wizard option and click next. And on the right side, we can see a list of tables which are used in the sales invoice replacement. These are the same tables which are used in the Sales Invoice SSRS report. Um, so they have been copied across to the replacement. Uh, the temp tables are populated using the SSRS reports data provider class, which is also used for the LazyNet replacement. And you can also add additional tables from the left if you need to enhance the data on your Sales Invoice report. And now we will click Next. And on the right side, we can see a list of fields which are currently being used for the sales invoice replacement. And again, these are the ones taken from the SSRS report, uh, but you can also add additional fields from the left if you need them. And as a general rule, if the fields are not needed, then do not add them to the report. This will improve performance as the report will generate faster if the unnecessary fields are removed. Uh, just one note here is that we shouldn't remove the rec ID for any of these tables. And we won't make any changes here, so we will click cancel. And this concludes a very brief overview of the query wizard. So now we will move on to the generation of the sales invoice report. 
And in this scenario, we will generate a sales invoice from a sales order, and the sales invoice will be posted at the same time, which will also create an invoice journal record. So back into Dynamics, we will click the icon to display the list of modules. Make sure the Accounts Receivable module is selected, then click All Sales Orders. Make sure a sales order with a status of Delivered is selected. So we will use uh, 000754 for this scenario. And then we will click Generate Invoice. Make sure Print Invoice is set to Yes, then click Printer Setup. And then click Invoice. And here we can see a list of print destinations. You will notice the standard Dynamics options in this list, as well as the LaceNet options. However, in this scenario, we will keep it simple by just sending the document to LaceNet screen. So we can just click OK here. And we can leave the rest of the fields as their default settings. So click OK. And that's fine. We can click Yes for this one. And now the XML file has been generated and converted into this PDF version, which has then been displayed on our screen. We can download a copy of this sales invoice PDF by clicking the download icon in the top left corner. And this concludes our first scenario where we have posted the sales invoice and generated the sales invoice report at the same time. So now we will generate a sales invoice from an invoice journal and then we will have a look at what that looks like. So we will use the CLM sales order. So 000754. We can see here that the generate invoice button is now greyed out as we have already generated the invoice for the sales order and we can see the status has changed to invoice. Uh, but we can generate the sales invoice again by going to the journal record over here. So let's go to invoice journal. Here we can see the invoice journal that we posted earlier and we will regenerate this sales invoice LaserNet report. So let's click LaserNet, click Resend. And we will keep this scenario nice and simple by using LaserNet screen again. And you may notice that there is a force rerun toggle when you generate a report from a journal. Now we are currently looking at this toggle for the sales invoice journal, but the same applies to other journals like the sales order confirmation, uh, the purchase order confirmation journals, and so on. And if you set force rerun to no, then the LaserNet connector will retrieve the previously archived sales invoice PDF. And if you set force rerun to yes, then the LaserNet connector will send a fresh XML file and the latest version of the sales invoice design will be generated. Um, setting force rerun to yes means the processing time will take a bit longer, but you will uh, need this to be set to yes if you want to test new design changes. In this case, we haven't made any design changes to the form, so whether we set this as yes or no, we will get the same result for this scenario. So let's click OK. And here we can see the sales invoice, and this concludes our second scenario where we have generated a sales invoice report from an invoice journal.